Welcome to Ear to the Common Ground. Here we celebrate the power of music and food to bring Americans together. Filmed from an historic barn on Cash Lane in Music City, each episode features one musical artist and a diverse gathering of eight of their fans. Everyone brings a dish to the table and they talk about one of the issues of the day, face to face with compassion, replacing contempt as they keep their hearts, ears, and minds attuned to the common ground. Hi, I'm Minton Sparks and these are eight of my fans. Ace, Theta, Dugan, Bell, Nicholas, Amy, Dana, and Marlos. Tonight, we're focusing on sexual politics and Me Too. Let's celebrate America's greatest diversity, diversity of thought, and shine a light on some common ground. Wheels around and takes a order from a couple of sheer ingrates. Do you want those scattered, smothered, and covered, hon? Wow, so we all here together right now, huh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm just gonna jump in. I know a lot of people um, tend to kind of put it only on men. Um, I know it's like a controversial statement, but as someone who has unfortunately been assaulted by both men and women, mm -hmm. um, it is not only a male subject. Um, I believe it's not only male. I just believe it's people, bad people, who just don't know their boundaries, don't understand other people's boundaries. Um, and just either haven't been raised right or had something, you know, innate in them uh, to think it's okay to go around and touch other people and ignore other people's boundaries. As many women as I talk to, I'm blown back at how many of them have, like, experienced sexual abuse, um, sexual harassment. It's, like, super prevalent, you know? Then there's this other side where guys have been pressed, like you were saying. Yeah. Uh, myself, I feel like I'm one of them, and on both sides. Like, for instance, in, like I said, I went to L.A. for the first time last week, and I remember being there, having a great time, and a group of people walked up, and this dude just, like, kept grabbing my arm, and I'm kind of like, you know, what's up right now? Yeah. But it's interesting how it always it feels like the message is different when it applies to men, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in some sense, you know. And I got another friend, he was talking to a lady the other day and he told her, he said, I feel like I've been raped by a woman before. Um, she kind of like discounted it, you know, and was like, oh no, that's not possible. She asked him, you couldn't move? And, and he was like, wow, that's interesting that she would say those same things that in some way, a woman's attacker would say, or somebody that doesn't believe a woman. Mm. Uh, you couldn't move, you couldn't get them off. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's an interesting perspective. For years, I worked as a, a crisis counselor uh, with uh, victims of crime, so that includes rape and domestic violence. So in those situations, there's always that element of power and control, because it's never really about the sex. Mm -hmm. It's not about the sex. It's about exerting power over mm -hmm. people. It's about um, having the uh, ability to, ha to have uh, access to somebody mm -hmm. and exercise mm -hmm. that. And that's what it's about. So, no, it doesn't have anything to do with anybody's gender, mm -hmm. but there is that element of power. You just are going to have to accept certain behavior that comes mm -hmm. along with the job. Um, and uh, there's, you know, um, definitely a lot of um, aggression involved sometimes. Uh, you know, well, it's just, you know, that's just boys being boys or, or whatever, or, you know, you're being treated as less than, or you're good for a girl. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think those kinds of um, attitudes really, tend to steamroll certain behaviors and, and create an environment that makes it more acceptable. I do like that there are younger women in this field, in this town, that are more empowered to say no, more empowered to say, this is the respect that I 
am expecting to earn and deserve. Mm. Um, and no, I don't have to work under that condition. Um, you know, this is a very toxic environment. No, um, you don't, you're not allowed to touch me. You are not allowed to say disparaging things about my sex or my clothing or my appearance in any manner. Um, it, it's, I, I'm, I'm glad the conversation is, is happening and that attitudes are changing and that it's making people think about things that in the past they probably would have brushed aside. It's I mean, interesting to think about because I don't want my boys to grow up in a world where they're a, a, a simple look nowadays. Yeah. You know, the, you give somebody an up and down or you send out a vibe. And I, I, I don't want them to be scared or lose that yeah. confidence to do that. And I, I think it's become, uh, you know, the, uh, that that generation, they're 17 and 18, they're more likely to text or to, to send mm -hmm. some, to not communicate verbally. Yeah. And uh, I, I just hope that they don't lose that confidence and that ability to talk to a girl or, or, or give a girl a look, give a girl a vibe that they're interested in. And, you know, it's, instead of sliding into their DMs, you know, it's like, <laughs> that's what the kids do. Yeah. I'm a survivor of childhood sexual abuse and I didn't have boundaries because I didn't know how to set them. Mm. So when the Me Too movement started gaining traction, we saw a lot of people bringing their stories out. Um, and I was one of those people who had had left it in for 20 years. So in those situations where someone would have showed interest in me, I would immediately freak out no matter who it was because I didn't know where to put the boundary and so this, the Me Too movement has, um, for me, has brought some empowerment in learning um, that I'm not by myself. I think social yeah. media is another thing when you were talking about what, what changed mm -hmm. social media. There were so many people who in the Me Too movement put things on social media. This is my story. This is my yeah. abuser. This is where I've been. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how long ago it was, mm -hmm. they were coming out with those things. But I, you know, I think about what you're talking about, like showing disinterest. It would have sent me into fright or flight if someone would have said, hey, I really think you're cute. I would have been gone, like mm -hmm. running for the hills. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to set those boundaries. So even if I ran for the hills, I still had people that crossed those boundaries. And it, it it's hard to determine. High school kids, some of them, I think, are smarter than we are, yeah. or smarter than we were mm -hmm. at, at that age. And and so, but then others don't have the boundaries. They haven't been taught the boundaries yeah. like mm -hmm. you were talking about, and they just don't know when to quit. And so they get a little bit of that taste, and they can't stop, and yeah. so they, they take it too far. I have never, with my friends, discussed assault, sexually assaulting women like that. <laughs> never. Yeah. And I would not hang out with mm -hmm. men that would do that. My yeah. friends do not mm -hmm. talk about that. Do we talk about how we are attracted to women? Yes. Do we talk about the specific things that we might be attracted to them for? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Never do we support each other or uh, or be have a braggadocious tone about uh, advances that are unwelcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hi. Wow. wow. Welcome. It's chocolate. Who does a love chocolate? Right. All right, all right, all right. Come on in here. Sure, I'm now, in. I, yeah. I, I'm going to put a tiny piece Sorry, right here. Oh, oh, man, you missed a good one, too. And then I'm going to pass it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Does that okay. work for you? <laughs> good, good. Okay, that looks good. Now, you can just, yeah. And then we'll just pass it around. I think that's what we're doing. All right. Did you make this? Um, you know, I I made it in a way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I made it in a way. It, it's it's I downloaded the recipe and then you know it's, it's gluten free, right? Because somebody needed gluten free. Me, so, yeah. I'm the lame. I'm okay. the lame one. Yes. Okay, so if it's it's a little if it's a little lame, so, it's the lack you. of gluten. <laughs> Blame me. No, <laughs> actually, very good. Okay, very really good. Good. good job. Let's say, poor old Daryl, Biddy's. <laughs> over crackling Coca-Colas, Linda has let herself go. They pick, pick popcorn from a Tupperware bowl and cackle. She's big as a broadside of a barn, and he ain't but that big around.
and she won't wear a girdle. She can't keep house. All those filthy cats she keeps, somebody ought to call the law. Well, my boy Sam saw her soldering car parts into sculptures in the night sky. And there Daryl is over there breaking his back on the graveyard shift. Oh, she'd be the death of Daryl. Mark my word. She was over at the song leader's house bumping, uh, get this, bumping uglies to some Chet Atkins records. That's just gossip. Oh, and touch the wicked woman with the Jesus sanctioned 10 foot pole. Wipe the dust from your feet, girls. Linda has let herself go. These clunk, clunk curses. Chicken. <laughs> Only fertilized Linda's leaving, Lord, and they like to head a fit. The night she hiked her skirt and lit out of that two-bit dumb clunk town. And by the grace of God, Linda let herself go. She let herself go. Let herself go, all right. Go, Linda. Go, go, go. Thank you. Thank you.